Sierra Leone, a land blessed with a stunning 530 kilometers of coastline, faces a rising tide. Once protected by vast swathes of mangrove forests, these low-lying beaches and islands are now increasingly vulnerable to the relentless advance of the sea. The mangroves, nature's shield against erosion and storms, are being stripped away for firewood, leaving the land exposed and defenseless. In the north, the story of Yelibuya echoes the broader crisis. Here, 2,000 residents are being forced to abandon their homes as their island sinks beneath them due to rising sea levels and intensifying weather conditions brought on by climate change. Global data from 20 to 20 shows sea levels have risen by 91.3 millimeters since 1993, a small number with colossal implications. And this island named Yelibuya Island can be a district some achieved them. Since the first same people land, this island be day before before and while it is to the flooding which can take place, it only destroy most of the houses them, most of the main center there, hospital, uh, mosque, uh, market center, most of them. So now this island they can come to an end. So now they can sky for develop other side but not get no access, not get no chance. I think it boiled come team some person or more such then so a freedom hospitals by labor. So so because even though the last time most of the prominent people in this, in this country then come to this island for referring to one place where they call Mahela village for referring. But like this would be help who will not get, like me could not get access for transfer. People who are not able to take oil by the people of Mento Marana, so it's time to keep it. I'm part of the world. It's bad and bad. I'm afraid of my bank. I'm going to talk about the people who are not able to get abortion. I'm going to talk about the people who are not able to get abortion. strong <laughs> A compound of Luluk, a matabokiri, a mox, a matabokiri, a hospital of Luluk, there to the church, a matabokiri. Even more and more, by a toilet in Edward. Around 80% of the 40,600 tons a year of plastic waste is currently being dumped on streets and rivers, where it flows down to coastal communities and then into the ocean. The Aberdeen Lagoon and Crew Bay community are hotspots of this problem, where large amounts of plastic from Freetown end up. Subsequently, the plastics are washed away by the tide each day, eventually ending up in the Atlantic Ocean. Currently, out of 90 tonnes of plastic waste generated in Freetown daily, 20 tonnes find their way to the legal dump sites, Kingdom and Kissy, while 70 tonnes pollute our environment, block waterways and drains causing flooding, or are openly burnt. <laughs> Last bank into Chifa Papa. Then plastic here, then the money we in this gutter. Then they make where they can, they make flood in the bin at this gutter. Right now, if you go look at the gutter, the gutter is congest with the plastic. The water they the run. And when the water full up, they go inside, we place them. If they suffer with too much. They are with the big Papa government, especially this gutter where they be in school of nursing. Let them can clean up for we. It's too fearful. Let we not go flood back this year, dear, with the bag, with them plastic here. They rubber, rubber, this mega cola. If they fill up the plastic, they fill up the gutter, then too much. Oh, the strain, that's the, they cause flooding in the community. Then, then plastic here with the, the stop, the, the, the free flow of the gutter, the drainage side. So, um, would they ask either 
government or NGOs them for make at least them help, give we helping hands for make we self we go get we for make we go able do this clearing. Let them plastic here there for the disturb we in the community. If we able get some sideway, we can get them plastic and we put them away, motor car go able to come for can take her and go to an abome. I am Titi Simbo Kamara, Head of Programs, Livelihood and Climate Change Station in Kenema. And in terms of challenges that community face when it comes to climate change, one is around access to resources. And when I talk about resources, it doesn't only limit to finance, but it also involves technical knowledge because the say, um, our people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So if you understand the science behind climate change, what are some of the proactive steps that community can employ or some of the, the proactive steps that community can engage in, we can also reduce the impact of climate change. Because as it is, we can combat it. But our collective actions count a lot. Specifically, incorporating local actions that are willingly derived by community people themselves, in, in, implementing and also interpreting most of the policies around climate change. We already know that Sierra Leone have signed treaties to most of those climate change policies around the world. But not most of uh, all of this knowledge is being shared down with the community people. So working with various line ministries, ensuring that we communicate most of these um, policies into um, something that they can comprehend, and the community also take proactive actions into incorporating some of those laws. This is therefore a call to action for all stakeholders, including line ministries, departments and agencies, international development partners, local NGOs and communities to commit themselves to integrated actions that will help build a climate resilient Sierra Leone.